I'd now like to introduce Roger Holmes Miller, Chair of Te Rata Atafai, the Independent Charities Registration Board, to speak about the board, its role, and its work over the last year. Kia ora, Roger. Good morning. Minister, I know you have to leave us soon, so I'm going to jump straight in and acknowledge you as the new Minister of the Community and Voluntary Sector and also as the Minister of Charities. Welcome. And uh, please accept my congratulations on your appointment. Thank you for your opening remarks and uh, thank you for thanking the sector. It has been a hell of a year for the charity sector. Minister, I know you have to duck away, but I just draw to your attention, we have some challenges with the law of charities and with which we're going to need your input, some of the guidance from you and your assistance, and we look forward to working with you in the times ahead. But if, may I just go back then and say it's an honour to be here today and to address you. I have presented at this meeting for the last few years, and it's always a huge pleasure to address those who are assembled here and the wider charitable community. In what's been an extraordinary year where charities have played such an important role in our country in sustaining it. Thank you also to Maria for being here today. Maria is the Deputy Chief Executive of the Department of Internal Affairs and thank you for your support of your team, uh, the Charity Services. Um, they help us as our board in carrying out our duties. Stephen Riley, thank you for your invitation, being here. Um, on behalf of the board, I acknowledge the support that you and your team at Charity Services have uh, given us over the last year. Stephen stepped into the role of general manager uh, while Natasha Waite is on parental leave. And last but not least, my fellow board members are here today. Pleased you made it from Tainui Waikato with the plane down this morning. Our newest member, Gwen, joined us just on a year ago. I don't think we had any idea, Gwen, what the year was that lay ahead of us. Um, we have adapted our ways of working to allow <clears throat> to continue to function during the pandemic, Gwen's flexibility and her legal focus in responding to the challenges involved and in being on this board is greatly appreciated. And full credit, Bev, thank you very much. I also expect the same gratitude to Dr. Bev Gattenby, who's been on the board since 2018. Bev's a wonderful colleague has shown real resilience and commitment during this time. I really appreciate, Bev, your pragmatism, your academic appreciation for the context of where charities are, where we operate, your deep community grassroots support and, and connections, which have helped bring the, a focus to the board, which maybe we were lacking in the past. Thanks, Bev. Today, I also pay tribute to the charities of Aotearoa New Zealand. The resilience, the number, of wire, uh, number eight wire resilience, has never failed to impress me. This was and is evident in the vital contribution they have made and are making in New Zealand's response to COVID-19. Under lockdown restrictions, charities continued to advance their charitable purposes in very challenging circumstances. Particularly, I wish to acknowledge those charities where workers were on the front line and also those charities whose funding programs and yearly cycles were disrupted and will have to manage the impact of the lockdown not only this year but for many years ahead. It's this ongoing community response that enables the spirit and support I've seen from charities since I've accepted my role of the chair of the board in 2018. And it's great to see it continuing. 
Our role as board members, as I've said on several occasions, is to make decisions on registration and deregistrations of charities. Although we, by written delegation, give routine decisions to charity services, we deal with the complex and new cases and the majority of these address the questions. What we have to deal with as a board, what is a charity? And the answer to that question is not always simple. I take this opportunity, therefore, to step back and take, make a brief observation on the history of this concept of charity in Aotearoa, what it means and what is a board we have to think about when we apply the law. I will be frank and maybe blunt and let you know where I feel the current law is limited and what I think is needed to rectify it for the future. Charities law in this country is driven by cases, by the decisions of the courts, the judges of the court. The board applies the decisions of the courts, it can't make the law itself. In most cases, this is straightforward. A vast majority of applicants get registered without issue. But in some areas of charitable purpose, there are some real challenges. In my opinion, the law of charities has got itself into a mess. For example, on my time at the board, the most challenging issue taken on appeal from the board's decision relates to organisations that are active advocates on how issues within the community should be addressed. Let me just expand on that. This one issue has resulted in eight different court decisions over the last eight years relating to th just three organisations. Two are still currently before the courts. In these decisions, the High Court has been overturned twice. In the Court of Appeal, that's three judges, we have seen, recently seen a split decision based on a majority of two with a stinging dissenting judgment. During this period of eight years, we've had only one Supreme Court decision. That's our top court with five judges. They were split with a majority decision of three and a dissenting decision of two. This lack of judicial consensus in this litigation reflects the complexity and the challenges of, of this area of charities law. This creates challenges for us as a board. It's clear from comments in recent cases and the different discussions that are being reached that judges also agree there's complexity here. The difficulty is, I believe, that we, the board, and the courts are endeavouring to apply historic English principles. I make it clear these are my views, not necessarily those of my board, but I, after eight years, I think it's time that I said something. This relates to the concept of charity, tracing back to the preamble of the Statute of Elizabeth, 1601. Elizabethan England was a very different world from 2020 bicultural, multicultural Aotearoa. Although the law has changed over the centuries through these court decisions, we find as board members, well I do especially, tracing charitable purpose back to the preamble doesn't fit the current social fabric of our society. One of the examples that, that's set out in that preamble, which to me completely illustrates the lack of connection to today's society, it says that charity is the purpose is to promote the marriages of poor maids. How does this reflect what we mean by charity today? Today we see applicants that include far broader purpose groups, like social enterprise and, and business, advocacy and lobby groups, professional membership groups. Some meet the charity criteria test, and some don't. And even the traditional concepts of education, religion and poverty, and public benefit 
are based and reflect and relate to a time when traditional, the traditional church solely undertook these roles. In recent years, I've been heartened by the level of discussion around these questions, including two excellent charity law and accounting conferences. Two recent speeches stood out for me, one by Justice Joe Williams in, in 2019. Joe, uh, Justice Joe Williams is now on the Supreme Court, and a recent presentation by Tai Ahu, who is now General Counsel for Tai O K Moana. Both reflected on the role and contemporary relevance of Te O Māori concepts of charity and the limitations of the existing charities law in engaging with and enabling Māori activity. Justice Joe Williams commented that the current definition of charity made sense in a historical and cultural context back in 1601, or when the churches were running the charities, but noted its gradual and sometimes tortured development through the courts. Justice Williams asked the question, how does the current law reflect and respond to New Zealand's unique treaty relationship and our wide range of ethnicities and cultures? My answer to its question is, our law doesn't fit. Tai Ahu's comments in a recent conference this year respectively built upon Justice Williams' thoughts. He focused on the benefit of incorporating tikiana Māori principles into registration and administration of charities. He thought the concept of atafai, which he defined as kindness, generosity, benevolence and hospitality as the fundamental principles of charity from a Maori way of thinking. He saw it as bringing the principle and action of charitable purposes together in a way that representing a manifestation of araha, which we know is love, emotional connection and compassion. It's this word atafai which we use in our board name, tirata atafai. We see our role as a board as the kopapa or purpose of charities. Bringing tikanga more formally into the consideration of what charity in Aotearoa today and in the future resonates with me. Understanding what is a charity can be confusing and contradicting set of legal requirements and application processes. Public trust and confidence in charities, one of the main purposes of the Charities Act, is hard to build when even the judges can't agree on the definition of charity. I will summarise now. First, Parliament, and I'm not just talking about one government, I'm just talking about Parliament itself, has said that the historic English common law principles still apply. Secondly, judges say it's not up to them to determine public benefit. And thirdly, charity law, in my opinion, does not recognise te ao Māori. We need to find a solution to these problems or to these issues. We, as a board, have given this some thought and consider the review of the Charities Act as a good opportunity to ask the body set up to consider significant legal problems, the Law Commission, to consider the issues that I've presented today. The Law Commission can figure out the answers that appropriately incorporate and reflect tikanga principles and charities law in Aotearoa 2020 that reflect our society and not some old English archaic principles and traditions. I think that's enough for me on my thoughts on the current Charities Act. So I'd like to finish on a very positive note. During my eight years, almost nine years now on the board, the board has registered over 9,000 charities. I find it really enjoyable reading some of the wonderful and varied charities that pop up and work 
and advocacy that's being undertaken by all our charities. Although I think there's a need for rewriting the law of charities, it's heartening that I've seen a lot of charities empowered to deliver benefit to their communities, especially this year. It's been an extraordinary year, and I think we're all lucky that so many charities have stepped up to them and fulfilled their role. Finally, can I thank all charities for the fantastic work they do for our country. Na mihi nuhu. Thank you all.